Hey there, everybody. It's Pastor Jason. I'm glad you can join me in our continuing study of Acts. Today we're in Acts 21. This week we'll be working with four new questions. How should I be affected by this passage? What steps do I need to take to move forward toward that change? Who needs to hear this scripture? And in what way can I tell it to them gracefully? All right? We don't want to beat someone's head, beat someone over the head with scripture. But notice we're asking the first question of ourselves first. That's the priority for us to be changed, have our heart changed. So that way we are put in a better place when we go to approach somebody else and we can be doing it from a place of humility. Let me pray for us and we'll jump right in. Father, thank you so much for your scripture and Lord, we thank you how much we can learn and gain from it. I pray that you would bless our day, bless our week, help us to know how to speak to the people around us about your love and grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. So Acts 21, uh, we start off with the book of maps. If you've got maps in the back of your Bible, you might want to check them out because we're going to go through a couple of place names, but then we're going to get into something uh, that's important to think about in terms of talking with people. When we had parted from them and had set sail, we ran straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patra. And having found a ship crossing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we came in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we kept sailing to Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unload its cargo. After looking up the disciples, we stayed there for seven days, and they kept telling Paul through the Spirit not to set foot in Jerusalem. When our days were there were ended, we left and started on our journey, with, while they all, with wives and children, escorted us until we were out of the city. After kneeling down on the beach and praying, we said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship, and they returned home again. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Talmus, and after greeting the brethren, we stayed with them for a day. On the next day, we left and came to Caesarea, and entering the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, we stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who were prophetesses. As we were staying there for some days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, This is what the Holy Spirit says. In this way, the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When he had heard, we had heard this, we, as well as the local residents, began begging him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but even to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we fell silent, remarking, The will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and started on our way up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea also came with us, taking us to Nason of Cyprus, a disciple of long standing with whom we were to lodge. After we arrived in Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly, and the following day Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After he had greeted them, he began to relate one by one the things which God had done among the Gentiles through the ministry. And when he, they had heard it, they began glorifying God, and they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law, and they have been told about you that you are teaching all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children, nor to walk according to the customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Therefore do this that we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take them and purify yourself along with them, and pay their expenses, so that they may shave their heads, and all will know that there is nothing to the things which they have been told about you, but that you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the law. But concerning the Gentiles who have believed, he wrote, we wrote, having decided that they should abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what is strangled, and from fornication. 
Then Paul took them in, and the next day, purifying himself along with them, went into the temple, giving notice of the completion of the days of purification, until the sacrifice was offered for each one of them. When the seven days were almost over, the Jews from Asia, upon seeing him in the temple, began to stir up the crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, come to our aid! This is the man who preaches to all men everywhere against our people and the law in this place. And besides, he has even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place, for they had previously seen Tromphius, the Ephesian in the city, with him, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was provoked, and the people rushed together, and taking hold of Paul, they dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. While they were seeking to kill him, a report came up to the ro commander of the Roman cohorts, and that all Jerusalem was in confusion. At once he took along some, of, some soldiers and centurions and ran down to them, and when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander came up and took hold of him and ordered him to be bound with two chains, and he began asking who he was and what he had done. But among the crowds, some were shouting one thing and some another, and when he could not find out the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. When he got to the stairs, he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. From the multitude of the people kept following them, shouting, Away with him! As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I say something to you? And he said, Do you know Greek? Then you are not an Egyptian, who some time ago stirred up a revolt and led the four thousand men of the assassins out in, into the wilderness? But Paul said, I'm a Jew of Tarsus in, Sicil in Cilicia, a citizen of no insignificant city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. When he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the stairs, motioned to the people with his hand, and when there was a great hush, he spoke to them in the Hebrew dialect, saying, and we're going to leave it as a cliffhanger right there because that's chapter 22. That's tomorrow. Today's questions. How should this uh, passage affect me? What are the steps do I need to take to move toward that change? Who needs to hear the scripture? And in what way can I tell it to them gracefully? Uh, to me, when I look at this, I just think of the diligence of Paul. And that's kind of what the Lord's really speaking to me today. Diligence. How do I keep moving on, keep going on, keep doing the things I know I need to do? When we look at the, you know, when we look at when people come to him and talk to him, notice here, people come to him in, in the spirit, right? And give him a warning about Jerusalem. Does it deter him from going to Jerusalem? No. Sometimes when people get a warning, like the first thing you want to do is turn and go the other way. But sometimes the Lord wants us to walk into messy situations. So question number two, what do I need to do to move forward in that change? I need to pray and keep, uh, you know, actually I'm at that place where I need to write a list down and simply make sure I put a check mark next to that list. Um, but also, I need to be affected by the scripture by being willing to talk to people even when they are uh, difficult. People who want to not hear the scripture. And what steps do I need to make toward that change? I need to be willing to prepare my heart in advance that I, I pray with the Lord that the next time that opportunity comes along to actually say something. I actually need to be praying that an opportunity presents itself and that I will be wise and open-minded enough and have my eyes open to the situation that I actually take advantage of that opportunity and speak scripture in. Maybe I can use some of the short scripture memory we've been learning uh, week after week. And how do I, how do I, who needs to hear that scripture? This is this is something that's going to be baked in for you and me. These are some private questions. Who needs to hear the scripture that maybe we read this morning or that you're learning in your quiet time? 
In what way can you tell it to them gracefully? In a way that shows that you want to come alongside them, help them draw nearer to the Lord. It shouldn't just be some scripture bomb that you throw from across the street like you did with snowballs as a kid. No, th these are scriptures that you're bringing to someone and you're going to walk alongside them as they work through things, as they draw nearer to the Lord. And in that way, you can. it's easier to be graceful in what you say and engender true spiritual growth. I hope that you had a good time with chapter 21 today. I'll be looking forward to what he has to say to that crowd that just beat him up tomorrow as we study chapter 22. I hope you have a fantastic day. Be blessed. Be a blessing.